Okay, this was interesting. I, let me know if you've heard of this before. The Broncos lose 13 to 6, and we can get into all the uh, ugliness was this game. And we'll hear from Sean Payton and Quinn Miners, and, um, you know, we'll hear from everybody. Plus, we'll go over the NFL scoreboard and let you know what's what. Sean Payton speaks at 10 a.m. today. It'll be interesting to see what he saw because apparently we don't have the right players or the right players aren't in the right position or blah, 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 blah. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, going into this game, the big story was Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson and the Broncos. So pregame, Russ comes in. And I did notice, although he was throwing just fine, you know, these guys, even in, in warm-ups, they tend to run from one thing to another, at least slightly jog. Russ wasn't able to do that. Um, he was able to sort of throw fine. He looks okay. Um, he was greeted with big hugs and handshakes and smiles by a lot of people from the Broncos. Coaches, players did not see any interaction with him and Sean Payton. Um, but I saw interaction with him and like a million other people. So it, it's not like he's that hated. That's for sure. So I think his, it, it, he did get booed when they, when he, he is a captain, they put him up on the jumbotron and he got booed by the crowd. That was it. Uh, and even that was, you know, not that big of a deal. I, I, I would say at the end of the day, the whole thing wasn't that big of a deal. But teams find motivation in all sorts of ways. So I guess the Steelers give away petty game balls. I don't even quite understand this. Maybe you will. But here was um, Justin Fields after the game talking about Russell Wilson getting a game ball. I mean, I think we all know uh, Russ got kind of did dirty last year, so... Um, I know he wished, you know, he could have played uh, today in this game, but it's awesome, you know, getting a win for him. He got a petty game ball, so, um, yeah, it's great getting a dub for us, for sure. Petty game ball? Petty game ball, you know, because he was here, so. I'm sorry. What? Oh, wait, what? A, a petty game ball? <laughs> so I, I, I am going to have to do some digging on this. So does Mike Tomlin just automatically give away game balls if you're on the team and you beat your old team? And they they call it a petty game ball? Come on, man. You got to help me out. Have you guys ever heard of anything like that? I mean, I think we all know uh, Russ got kind of did dirty last year. So um, I know he wished, you know, he could have played uh, today in this game. But it's awesome, you know, getting a win for him. He got a petty game ball. So, um, yeah, it's great getting a dub for Russ for sure. Okay. All right. Petty game balls for everybody. You get a petty game ball. You get a petty game ball. We all get petty game balls. That feels like an insult, doesn't it? I don't know. That That's a weird one on me, man. But okay, you give away petty game balls. Justin Fields was 13 of 20 for 117 yards. A QBR of 48.5 and a rating of 97.3. All extremely mediocre. Um, 5.9 yards per throw with the touchdown. He did have eight rushes for 27 yards. And he had a deep completion taken away by penalty. He was fine. Okay. And I think Justin Fields will just get better and better. I think he's got some pretty obvious talent. But in general, the Broncos did keep him in check. Um, you know, it was rough, man. The Broncos were held without a touchdown. Uh, just a couple of field goals. They were shut out through three quarters. You know, it was just, it was rough. Bo Nix, 20 of 35 for 246, which sounds all right, actually. But two interceptions, sacked twice. Um, Justin Fields was sacked twice too. QBR of 32.1 and a rating of 55.2. Terrible, terrible numbers. Meanwhile, Knicks had four carries for 25 yards. One was a designed run. That was cool. But overall, the Broncos ran the ball 19 times for 64 yards. I mean, yikes. 
Steelers ran the ball 36 times for 141 yards. So they they ran it way more than they threw it. Um, 36 rushing attempts to 20 passing attempts. <clears throat> and the Broncos, again, um, were out of whack. 35 passing attempts to 19 rushing attempts. Quinn Miners um, was asked, uh, you know, about the running game. And was that a point of emphasis this week? Was the game plan to get the run game going this week? Yeah, there was a there's definitely an emphasis on, on the run game this week. And um, it, it really sucks to, to fall short once again. You're going on the road for basically the next two weeks and you're not going to be home. Is this something that better be good for this football team, being together on the road away from everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, need it. We need, we need to um, be together um, and, and take advantage um, of this trip as, as best we can. Um, yeah, it's going to be two fun road games. Sean talked about the <laughs> Yeah, it's a, sounds like a lot of fun. I asked Quinn Miners, too, about being a captain, and uh, he goes, well, you know, I don't really – I lead by example. I'm like, okay. I'm not really a vocal guy. He's not. He's a nice guy. He's a super nice guy, but he's pretty quiet and humble, and he's just not a vocal dude. Uh, and then Sertan, he's not really a vocal dude. Um, and then Bo Nix is a rookie, and then Lutz is a kicker. And you look around, and you're like, the captains of this team are like, Yikes, because it's all about really, you know, Sean Payne as the captain. But I, I will tell you who a vocal leader is, and that's Cortland Sutton. And he says, baby, we got, we got to burn the boats here, pal. And, you know, that's on us. It's on us to figure that out and, and to, to find a way. That's the biggest thing, find a way. We have to find a way. There is no, no one's going to come save us. It's only us, you know. Um, as people have said before, the boats have been burned. It's literally us. At the training camp, once the roster got, got made, this is us. This is all we have. This is all we need. And we know that we have what we need in this locker room, and we will get it figured out. We're looking. Okay. <coughs> well said, Cortland. I thought Cortland was actually pretty cool after the game. And he was, you know, saying, listen, man, we, we were in a bad stretch last year, and we, we put a bunch of games together. And that is true. Uh, starting 0-2 is not ideal, obviously. And it, it, I mean, this is almost a guaranteed loss going into Tampa. September for the Broncos in Florida has been brutal over the years. And I, everybody, everybody, when we look at games and picking games would say, oh, yeah, this, this one, this is a loss for the Broncos. And then you look at the game the next week against the Jets. You start three or four on the road. It is a tough start to the schedule. They are staying at the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia between the Tampa game and the New York game. So they're not coming home. So um, Broncos will have an uh, early season retreat to sort of get their heads together. But Tampa's good, really good. They're 2-0. and They just beat Detroit in Detroit. Baker Mayfield's playing well. Something that is pointed out when you see that the um, Saints beat the uh, Cowboys 44 to 19, right? I mean, that is incredible. It is to be noted that they are making a big deal in New Orleans about how they've ditched the Sean Payton offense for the first time. And now, um, you know, now they're kicking ass. Camara with 20 carries, 115 yards, three touchdowns. Um, and, you know, this is the Cowboys, bro. I mean, this is not like a shit team. This is the Cowboys. Derek Carr, 11 of 16 for 243. So not throwing a lot, but when he's throwing, it means something. And just a, a huge emphasis on running the ball. 16 throws to 39 carries. For the Saints and an absolute demolition of a good team. They scored a stunning 35 points in the first half. I mean, wow. Wow. And this is because you got rid of Sean Payton's offense. Meanwhile, the Broncos are the Broncos. Here's Sean Payton addressing like uh, a bunch of stuff, you know, and and we can get to you this. know you know you're going to have growing pains with a rookie quarterback, but it's still tough to kind of yeah, go through it. Yeah, we got we got a mistake in the route too, so there, there's some dirty hands on that play. 
Um, but it's a fair question. Um, hey, Sean, uh, why not do the onside kick there at the end? Yeah, we spent deep? a lot of time going through it. Um, you know, look back and forth. We, we had plenty of time to discuss it. There, there was a player down. Um, we felt like our, our odds, the, the long run on third down prior to them punting took about six seconds. Um, we were hopeful to have two or three plays before we go, went to the ends. It, it was just weighing the odds versus recovering an onside kick or um, you know, getting the ball back with 26 seconds. So we chose to kick off. When you kicked and you made it 13 to three, was there a tot there? Hey, just go for the touchdown because we might not get enough possessions. No, I think win this time wise, we, we felt like we were still in a good position. I mean, looking at the clock. Coach, can you expand on when you say we don't have, we got to have be fair with who asks, who does what? Yeah, I'll, I'll be, it's just when you, when you run a play and it has success and you're, you're looking at the pieces, um, when you run a play and it doesn't have success, you know, are we, are we putting in our guys, our guys in the best position? We're rotating a lot of different personnel groups in and out. I don't know if that's helping us quite honestly. And, uh, we just need to evaluate that closely, you know, evaluate what we're doing relative to our personnel. Okay. I, let, let me just play this in the beginning because this is how Sean Payne opened his press conference. Up, and that starts with me. Um, we got to start really looking at who we're asking to do what. And uh, that was, you know, it was frustrating because there were certain elements that went kind of according to plan field position wise but um but our inability to score and convert third downs um you know ultimately uh hurt us any questions yeah okay so what what i'm hearing there and i don't know maybe i'm wrong if if i am but what i'm hearing there is the game played out like we thought we had a plan so nothing surprised us and what we called should have worked, but we're calling things that should work, but we don't have the guys to pull it off. That's that's what I'm hearing there. Broncos were uh, two of twelve on third down. I mean that is that is terrible. You're just not going to move the ball being that bad. Steelers were four of thirteen, not a whole hell of a lot better. But but again, you know, the, the, the rushing yards were just, again, absolutely brutal for the Broncos. 19 carries for 64 yards. Javante Williams, 11 carries for 17 yards. That is terrible. Tyler Beatty had one carry for 16 yards, and that was the only carry he got. Why? Why not give him the ball more? Jaleel, three carries for six yards. So, listen, we knew the... Pittsburgh D line was going to be tough, but it was another game. And again, it was another, you know, a bunch of three and outs and short drives. And, and that's why when the Broncos were moving the ball, when they did have an opportunity to score a touchdown, it was brutal that Bo Nix um, threw that interception in the end zone. Bo, can you take us through the interception in the end zone? Uh, yeah. Um, Chop back, do it to the other team. But you've got to try to at least build up the confidence. But here's the trouble. If the team is really that bad, the quarterback's strong, he's a young guy, the confidence level may be in jeopardy. Coach, how, how difficult is it keeping a rookie quarterback confident? Um, I think... It depends on their personality, and I think he's got the right makeup and personality where, um, look, you know, he's running around, he's competing. Um, there's some pressures. There's a misprotection late in the game. Th those are frustrating things that um, I said this a week ago. We need to be better around him. But um, I, I think he's – listen, this guy's been – you know, he's been through it. Um, it'd be different if he hadn't. Coach, you talked about. And then there were some dumb plays like P.J. Locke, you know, personal foul on a, a play that you had won, and then P.J. Locke's diving in there. That's dumb. 
the strategy about not doing the onside kick. Listen, when you get to onside kick time, things things are a bit desperate. I do agree that they did have plenty of time when they kicked the field goal. And, and the fact that Pittsburgh had 13, not 15, of course, it makes a difference. You keep it to a one-score game. I, I'm fine with that. That's That's not a big deal to me. What was more perplexing wasn't kicking the field goal in the fourth quarter with really loads of time left. I thought there was plenty of time left. Um, what was perplexing to me, well, there were two times, I suppose, in the fourth quarter. The first field goal, there was plenty of time left. The second one, yeah, I guess you're right. That that could have been, yeah, that 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 was weird the second time. I mean, because any doing basic math, if the Steelers were just a, run the ball, you'd only have 20-something seconds, and that's indeed what happened. Like, that's not plenty of time. So, okay. <laughs> I mean, you got an onside kick there. It's, it's, it's kind of okay if you're not going to go for the touchdown. You want to keep it a one-score game. I mean, that's fine. That I get that. I do get that. I'm going around in circles here. I'm sorry about that. But the onside kick would give you, I don't know, who knows. We're, we're all talking about desperate things. There was one play that worked, and Mike Sanford pointed out with Bo Nix, um, when, when, they, when they went empty, Bo was able to, you know, they, there were a couple of good that things. That second quarter empty started becoming a bigger part of what you guys did. How comfortable do you feel operating out of empty to be able to see it and diagnose and make quick decisions yeah I thought that was one of you know our best plays you know we got into empty and we were able to evaluate what they were doing um you know they were playing base to to our personnel and you know had guys up on the ball um more than db so we felt like we could space it out and get something going and you know several of our key um you know conversions for for first downs came out of empty so yeah Including a fourth down, and that worked out all right. Hey, man, this is it. Like Cortland Sutton said, the boats have been burned. And when Vegas sets the over-under at five and a half, and most of us said, hey, maybe six, seven games if we're having a good season, uh, this is what it looks like. And again, these are one-score games. So you have lost two one-score games. And, and this might be what this year is about. This game played out almost exactly how everybody thought it would. Low scoring, one-score game. Can you win that one-score game? Can you figure it? So that's why that, that interception in the end zone was... I, you, can't, you didn't go for a field goal at the end of the first half. Why? I actually don't know. You're going to punt. They call a timeout. You go back out there. I think they're just going to try to draw the Steelers off sides. They run a play. It's a terrible play. It wasn't close to being completed. It would have been short of a first down anyways, even if it was caught. I, I really don't know. It was, uh, you know, both Lutz and their kicker there. What's the space? They were bombing kicks in from way plus 50 yards, plus 60 yards in pregame warmups. So you screwed that one up. He should have just got some points on the board or tried. So when you, when those, those type of moments don't matter if you're going to pile up a ton of points. But right now this offense looks outdated. As Sean Payton said, they're not running the ball. They don't, they don't have the right people for what they're trying to do. So you've got to revamp things, man. You got to revamp things. You got to call an offense that's going to suit the personnel that you have. Plain and simple. And right now, the Broncos don't have that. And Cortland Sutton said the boats have been burned. And now you're on the road in a really, really rough stretch. But I'm glad you can play Parcheesi together and maybe have a trust fall and, and uh, go into the woods. and. Maybe do group meditation at the Greenbrier. Perhaps there's a yoga class.